Hey guys, what's up? This is Matt Ramsey with the Octave Hire East Voice Studio, and this is episode nine of Octave Hire TV, and it starts now. Tragic news this week, of course. Everybody is talking about the unfortunate death of such an amazing musical hero, David Bowie. Lived to be 69 years old, and I just absolutely loved Bowie. I mean, he was amazing. I could play for several hours in the Bay Area Rapid Transit or BART stations in San Francisco. And, you know, nobody would stop, nobody would pause, you know, people would smile or, you know, they'd, they'd give me a little thumbs up or something like that. But then I would play Ziggy Stardust or uh, Moon Age Daydream, uh, anything from Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. And people would just stop and people would clap and people would boogie and they would dance and, you know, they, they would go crazy. And I think that that was a really, really unique thing that um, Bowie was able to do. He was able to, to do rock music and pop music and make it really, you know, dancey and poppy and also kind of gritty all at the same time. And it was a really magical thing. Now, I don't want to talk for this whole episode about the virtues of David Bowie, but what I think is really important in that story is that it illustrates just how important song choice is. Now, the fact that I could play 20 songs, you know, most of them admittedly really obscure Bob Dylan tunes or uh, M. Ward or Elliot Smith that a lot of people didn't know, um, I played something that was really instantly recognizable, had a whole lot of bite to it, had a whole lot of catchiness to it. Um, oftentimes, people come in for their lesson and they have no idea what to sing. Uh, it happens a whole lot for bands that are playing on stage. You know, a lot of bands make up what they're about to play five minutes before they start. But I think the the question that this begs is what makes for a good song to be included in your repertoire? Because honestly, I mean, that's why we're here, right? We're here to play songs for people. We're here to to share our gift of music and the gift of of our voice with as many people as possible. And we want to play stuff that people enjoy and we want to play stuff that we enjoy as well and share that special thing about it. So what I want to talk about today is what makes for a good repertoire piece. Okay, so first let me say that I'm really, really excited that I've created um, a, a playlist called the Octave Higher East Mixtape. And I want to share it with everybody who sees this video. And all it is, is is a collection of great singers and their songs according to me. Okay, in my opinion, I've chosen these songs for their beauty, um, for their technique, for their difficulty. Some of them are really easy, some of them are really hard. But I think what's really great about all of them is that somebody can get something uh, vocally out of all of them. Male or female, we can alter the keys, we can alter the pitches that you're singing. Um, if any of the songs really speak to you, feel free, bring them in, take a lesson with them, let's work on them. The reason that I created the playlist is because I see a whole lot of people come in, they don't know what they want to work on, or they don't want to know what they want to sing, or they're looking for recommendations on great things to sing. The Octave Higher East mixtape is designed exactly for those people. Additionally, if you're cooler than I am, which I'm positive that a whole lot of you are, this is a collaborative playlist, which means that you can actually add your own favorite songs to it, your own favorite, you know, vocal uh, highlights, you know, so maybe you love Mariah Carey and you want to put a Mariah Carey song on there. You absolutely can. All you have to do is add me as a friend on Facebook and like our Octave Higher East Facebook page and you'll have full access to the Spotify playlist, which you can alter. So, which brings us to what makes for a great repertoire song. It's a really elusive quality. In my opinion, you have to have an emotional baseline to the song, an emotional connection that you have that will make it convincing and that will keep you motivated to keep working on it, uh, you know, even after maybe you've done it a hundred times and you still haven't nailed it exactly right. Um, the second thing that we look for, I would say, is the structure of the song. Normally, a lot of songs are going to start out kind of small, 
build up big, small, big, small, big, you know, kind of A, B, A, B, A, B structure songs. This is really great, but the thing that it highlights most is dynamic changes. So the changes in you know, intensity or the emotional quality of the song is starting low, going up, going down, but the bottom line is that it changes. So, you know, rarely do we see really awesome songs that are interesting vocally that kind of just stay here and end here. You almost never see that. Most songs are going to have some change there. So what I look for personally in a repertoire piece uh, that's interesting vocally is that melody changes around a whole lot. Maybe not switching keys, but it's going up and down and up and down, and there's an exciting part where it hits this really high note, and then it comes back down, and there's lots of variety there. The next thing that I look for in selecting these songs is technique, you know? Um, to me, this is the, the least important aspect of the criteria of why I chose these songs, not because technique isn't important. It is so important. I'm a voice teacher. I make my living teaching people great technique. But the point is, is that look for the interesting songs first that mean something to you, and then we can incorporate and add in our own beautiful technique to really sing that song in your own voice rather than copying somebody else's bad technique. The best example that I can think of right now is a Ray LaMontagne song, uh, Jolene. I absolutely love this song. Cocaine flame in my bloodstream. So my cold when I hit Spokane. Now, Ray LaMontagne has a really, really raspy voice. Now, this is not good technique, but I think it's an amazing song because he actually goes to a really kind of brave place. I still don't know what love means. In my voice, in what I would work on, I still don't know what love means. This is a difficult place to sing in a male voice. And if we were to switch the key up a little bit to maybe do closer to a female key, it'd be a really interesting piece to do for a female as well. Again, it's kind of switching around a lot. The melody is going up and down, but I also feel an emotional connection to the song, and I really love the story of it. So I would urge you, please check out this Octave Higher East mixtape. Add whatever you want to it. Play some jazz. Be spontaneous. Take a risk on some songs that you absolutely love and you want to see on there, because I guarantee some of my other students who are looking at it are going to learn something from it as well. After all, I'm just one person, and I just like uh, you know a lot of different genres of music and a lot of different uh, songs. However, I'm sure that you know a whole lot more about uh, you know African polyrhythms than I do. So feel free, add, share, and use however you want. This is Matt Ramsey with Octave Fire East. I'll see you next week. Bye.